Hey everyone, welcome to another quick video. In this short video, I'll be talking about how the steps you'd take to sell your business. I get that question asked quite often. So if that's something that interests you, then stick around and let's go through it. Now, a successful sale takes a lot of planning and preparation. And oftentimes when we get clients, they haven't planned at all and they wanted the business sold about six months ago. So we can only sort of work the parameters that has been given to us. But ideally, we set the business up as best we can for sale and get a really good understanding of who that buyer is. Now, once we've got the business prepped and set up, now first main step is gathering information. So when you've spoken with the broker, They'll usually ask for a whole number of items and depending what industry you're in, that might vary, but you know, the last three to five years financials, a lease, list of plant and equipment, and a few other things, your involvement, number of employees, etc. And we gather all that information to see how that business will sort of sit or compare on the market with the price that other businesses it doesn't have to be similar models, but similar industries might compare to. So that's the first step and that sort of dictates the price. Go to market, I don't know why, that we're on a price based off what money they owe or what they'd like to achieve and that just that really will rarely be relevant on the market for what buyers are, are willing to be prepared. So it usually ends up just being a big waste of time. So it's really important you get that price correctly. And lastly, for step one, you'd want to already spoken with your accountant because there could be some tax implications once you sell your business, you don't want to realize that maybe what you've stated in a balance sheet for plant equipment is more than what you purchased it. You might be liable to capital gains tax. So it's best to understand what your position will be after the sale and what monies you are owing that might that you'll have to pay out of the business sale. Okay, step two, marketing. All just like property. All business will require a marketing fee. Some of, depends who you go with, some might even be a marketing plus an IM fee. They can range, honestly, for a small business from about $3,000 to $5,000. Some might even go up to six. And usually for myself, it's about four and a half grand. That includes the information memorandum, preparation, a draft contract, and the marketing fee as well. So if you go budget off about four to five grand, you should be pretty safe. And once it goes to market, that's usually your part done for a while. From there, there's a, you know, all the inquiries will take place. You've given the broker all the information required. There will be specific questions that each individual buyer will come back with. So you'll probably answer them. What you should be doing is composing all those questions to one item, because a lot of the time, the buyers will have the same questions as well. So at this stage, you really wanna be concentrating on your business and let the broker concentrate on the sale of your business. Now, for time frames, this particular part can take anywhere between three and 12 to 18 months. You know, things are taking a lot longer than they used to. You know, there is a lot more activity right now than there was say 12 months ago or in 2020. But in saying that, you'd want to at least budget six months on the market. So, you know, you might be considering you started the process back when you first gave your broker a call, but the reality is that it's once you get onto the market is when it kind of the process really starts. Now, the last main step into selling your business is what's called the settlement stage. And it really is a bit misleading, call it that, because you'll get an offer that you've now accepted with some broad terms, price and handover and, and exclusivity or restraint deeds. But once you go to contract, those terms can really blow out and can almost mean something entirely different to what you agreed on. But even though technically it's the same, I always advise my clients that you've both agreed on the color blue. And then you go off and you tell two other parties what that color blue is and you're gonna get two different colors. So there's a real risk of this stage getting bogged down at the contract stage. Now, the biggest deal killer is what we call lag, and that's lawyers, accountants, and grief. So keep that in mind. It's important to get through that contract stage efficiently. 
and sometimes, and more often than not, Broke has to jump in and try to navigate some tricky clauses that the parties have been stuck on and lead with legal failures building up. So that's something that I always ensure I keep track of where the deals are going and what's taking a little longer than it should. And hopefully once you get that contract signed, then you've got a really clear path of what needs to be done to get to settlement. So once the contract's signed, then it should be just a step-by-step -step process on removing any conditions. And once you've removed all the conditions, then you go what's called unconditional. Once you've gone unconditional, that's probably the first point where you can start to feel confident that your sale will go through. So that period, an unconditional period, could be anywhere between seven days and 70 days, honestly. So it's a matter of time of you going back and running the business like you would any other day, all the way up till settlement, because there are certain standard conditions, which are a little different to the special conditions, that will dictate how your business needs to run or operate all the way up till settlement you need to abide by them because you, you can still put your deal at risk so they're the high level steps of going from i'm just thinking about selling my business to money in the account and even post settlement there will be a few conditions that you'll have to meet but they're your main ones and hopefully that gives you a bit of a better understanding of what steps you need to take and if you want to talk more about your business or at least preparing your business for sale then get in touch and we can go through what you need to do right now so you can get the best highest price in the shortest time without stress. I'm Mick Godwin, thanks for listening.